Hi folks, welcome. If you guys wanna post in the chat, like your due date, if you're having boys or girls, if you know, um, when you're, you know, if you, we're gonna help you plan out your maternity leave, so, or learn tips and tricks. So let us know any information to help ensure this is really great information for you. Um, it actually, I'm having a boy, oh, October baby. I have an October baby. Um, my daughter is October 21st. Um, we got a boy, 731. Oh, yay! <laughs> Rachel, hopefully you're in the, you're so close. <laughs> Early November. Oh, December. Is Emily's December, right? Lord? Emily is December. Yes. Very yes. nice. So we have some folks that are really smart and planning ahead. I feel like I started planning my maternity leave way too late in the game and it was very stressful. So it's smart that people are going to be planning ahead so that way you can properly take advantage of all the time. Um, there's like, you guys will learn today, there are lots of different types of leaves that you're going to be able to take. Um, hopefully we'll make it really easy for everyone. So, all right, well, it's 1101. Hopefully everyone, if you need your snacks, if you had to pee, <laughs> we're, we know what it's like being pregnant. Laura and I are both moms. So we've been there. Yeah. We want to make it easier for you. Um, I'll kick off and just share like Sprinkle Parents were a community here in the Bay Area providing education for parents because there's so much information like wills, trust in the state, potty training, sleep training, um, all different types of training. We also try and do really fun events so you can meet other parents, like my favorite, the winery and brewery takeovers or trolleys or park play dates. Um, and I'm so grateful to have Laura here today. She's actually a mom in one of my son's classes and she's gonna help you guys um, give you some information about how to uh, plan your maternity or family leave. Uh, it took me 13 hours, which is why I wanted to help create this course so that it's really easy for you guys. You don't leave any of your paid time on the table like I did my first time as I didn't know how to navigate it. So really hope um, you guys can put in questions in the chat as we go and we'll make it really fun and engaging for you guys. So I'll kick it over to Laura. Thanks so much again. Thank you. So thanks everyone for joining. Super excited to have you here this morning. Um, again, thank you, Brooke, for giving me this opportunity to present. So just a quickie about me. Uh, my name is Laura Isaacs. Um, I'm a benefits manager for an employee owned company. Um, I'm currently on maternity leave right now. Um, when I am working, I oversee our retirement plans and I also work closely with legal and other key HR members to develop my company's leave of absence procedures. I have my professional and human resources uh, certification and Society of Human Resources certified professional designation. Um, and I'm also the chair of Piedmont Civil Services Commission. Uh, so it's a volunteer position where we meet um, regarding HR and legal matters for employees in the city of Piedmont. Um, I'm a cat lady. I love country music, embroidery, and my family. Uh, my daughter, Emily, is three and a half, and Liana is five months old. So here's our agenda for this morning. Um, I'm going to go over the types of leave for birth parents, a potential timeline, leaves for non-birth parents, tips for leave, and leaving some time for questions for you. So leaves for birth parents um, in the state of California, there are three different things that you may be eligible for. Um, California Pregnancy Disability Leave the Federal Family Medical Leave Act and California's Family Leave Act. So I encourage you to check your employee handbook and or your collective bargaining agreement for any additional benefits or limitations on what I'm about to speak to. Also, please note, I am a lawyer, so I cannot give out legal advice. I can only um, make suggestions and you know help guide you. So just putting that out there. So California's Pregnancy Disability Leave. What it is, is it offers up to four months a partial paid wage replacement for when you are disabled due to your pregnancy. So this can start prior to birth at week 36 of pregnancy. It depends on your doctor. They may say that you need to go out um, at week 36 because maybe you need to be on bed rest. Um, I personally didn't take leave this time until week 39. I just wanted to keep working because I didn't wanna be bored at home. Um, this can also be available for pre-birth reasons. So maybe you are suffering from extreme morning sickness, fatigue, um, you need to be on bed rest. If your doctor has stated that you need time off relating to your pregnancy, PDL may cover these absences. 
after pregnancy, so after you deliver your baby, um, you are also usually disabled um, for six weeks for a vaginal delivery and eight weeks for a C-section. Um, for um, meeting employer regulations on this, there's no waiting period at your employer. So what that means is this leave is offered as long as you currently pay into state disability taxes. You file this directly online through the California EDD website. And something to note is that wage replacement begins on day eight of your leave. So what does this mean? There's a seven day waiting period. And oftentimes what I did and what other people do is they will take PTO for days one through seven while they wait for their eighth day of pregnancy disability leave to start. And then the state will go ahead and kick in and start making those payments. They're usually retroactive payment and it's between 65 to 70% of your take home leave. It is capped at $1,257 a week. So if you make more than that, unfortunately it's capped. Um, so again, it's, it's just a partial leave replacement. You can go ahead and do this online. Uh, you fill out a claim for PDL, it's super easy. You will get mailed a little uh, Bank of America debit card. And then what you can do is you can go ahead and link it to your bank account and it'll just automatically fund through there. So super simple. And we can send the links um, and a follow-up email for folks too, if you need it. Yeah, it's super simple. Um, hold on, looks like there may be a question. Hold on, let me look at the chat real fast. Yeah, there is. So what's the so, difference between no waiting period at the employer versus the first seven days waiting period before wage replacement? So through the state, through the state uh, PDL, basically, if you file this, there's always going to be a waiting period because they need to basically paid uh, disability leave needs to decipher that you are in fact disabled due to this. It's not, you know, maybe something where, you know, in other instances, maybe you have a cold, so you need to be off work and you're off work for three days, right? The state's not going to recognize that as that being a true disability. A disability is ranging from eight days to 180. So some people go unpaid in that time period, um, but others do take PTO just to kind of supplement that waiting period while you wait for your paid disability leave from the state to kick in. It's a little funky. Um, I will also note that in the event that your employer is going to give you, you know, 100% of your pay for your, uh, your time off that you're taking to deliver your baby and then stay home. So say, you know, maybe your employer is offering you six months paid leave. You can't double dip with pregnancy disability leave in your PTO. Why? The state will find out and they will make you pay it back. So again, that's why I always say, please check your um, employee handbook and talk to your, your HR benefits partner on this. Great question. Yeah, just really quick talking to your HR benefits partner, I think is such good advice because I think a lot of women, we try to do things on our own versus asking for help, um, which you'll see as a mom too is really important. But I would, you know, take the time to really sit down with your employer's HR benefits partner um, to work through what you're thinking, what you're planning, see if they can help you in any way, we, just to make sure that you kind of cover off on everything when you apply for leave. And also something else just to toss in there too is you don't have a time frame when you need to tell your employer. Obviously, in my organization, we say, you know, as much uh, advance notice as possible would be preferred. We usually say 30 days, but don't feel like the minute that you get that positive pregnancy test that you need to go tell your employer. You are under no obligation to tell them by a certain time period. So just throwing that out there. Um, so the Federal Family Medical Leave Act. So this is something... That is um, a nationwide law. Um, what it does is it provides 12 weeks of leave in a 12 month period, as long as eligibility is met. So pregnancy disability leave is covered under FEMLA. So FEMLA eligible employees are working uh, at a company that has 50 employees in a 75 mile radius. They've been employed at that employer for one year and they've worked 1,250 hours in the previous year. Why is FEMLA important? Well, in addition to giving you time off, it maintains your benefits in your company-sponsored health plan, and it guarantees your rights to job reinstatement at the end of your leave. So two really, really big important things. 
Um, for this, you would obtain paperwork directly from your employer and leave for FEMLA is unpaid. So this is where that uh, wage replacement for pregnancy disability leave kicks in. Um, FEMLA protects your job, it protects your health insurance plan, PDL is how you get paid. So this is something else that I always speak to. If your employer has multiple locations with individual tax IDs, you may not meet FEMLA eligibility unless that location has 50 or more people. So again, please make sure that you check your employee handbook and you talk to your HR business partner. Something else to note is in the event that you've already taken FEMLA for another qualifying reason, you may have a reduced amount of FEMLA leave available. So say maybe earlier this year you had surgery on your arm and you took FEMLA leave for two weeks. Well, instead of having 12 weeks of leave available, you would only have 10. So that gets a little specific and, um, you know, it might be a little too minute at the moment, but it's just something to think about um, if you've already been out this year. And again, if you have specific questions on this, I'm more than happy to, to take a deep dive into your situation. And the next kind of leave that we have is the California Family Rights Act. So very similar to FEMLA, it provides 12 weeks in a 12 month period for bonding with your baby. So FEMLA says pregnancy, disability, that's an eligible reason for FEMLA leave. California Family Rights Act says, hey, not so much. We're gonna cover baby bonding. So California Family Rights Act picks up where PDL ends when you're no longer disabled due to your pregnancy. The eligibility for SIFRA is a little bit different five or more employees at the company. So again, a big difference there. You have to have been employed for one year and worked 1,250 hours in the previous year. So again, very similar. It maintains your benefits in your company sponsored health insurance plan and guarantees your right to job reinstatement at the end of your leave. The big difference here is there are eight weeks partial wage replacement here. So for instance, once your doctor has determined that you are no longer disabled due to your pregnancy, you'll go online, your PDO claim will be able to convert to a paid family leave claim online. So that same little EDD card that you get from Bank of America, it's going to be reloaded for your eight weeks of baby bonding. If you work in the city and county of San Francisco, there is something uh, called the San Francisco Paid Parental Leave Ordinance. And what it is, is it means that your employer must make you whole. So the state pays you 65% of your wages for eight weeks. Your company has to make up that 35% to give you 100% of your paid, your normal wages to be paid during that time. Again, if you have questions on this, I'm happy to walk you through it. It gets to be, um, it, it can be a little challenging to sort through, but happy to take specific questions. So what does this all look like together? Well, here's a potential birth parent leave timeline. Um, I just did a quick assumption here. Uh, say you went out two weeks before your baby was due. So that's the red. Your pregnancy disability leave lasted for 10 weeks, two weeks prior, and you had a C-section. So you're off for eight weeks. Your green line is your FEMLA that covers your, um, your pregnancy disability leave. And then on week 10, when you are no longer disabled due to your pregnancy, your FEMLA then continues for another two weeks and your CIFRA, which is your California Family Rights Act that covers your baby bonding, will carry you for another 12 weeks. Again, I referenced your FEMLA year a lot. Um, what that is, is your 12 weeks of leave um, for each of these in a rolling 12 month period. So for instance, this is saying that you went out on June 1st, 2022. And that means that your family year would end on May 31st, 2023. Some options for non-birth parent leave. So we want to talk about those other, those other people in our lives, our partners. Um, in most cases, FEMLA SIFRA will run concurrently as long as you meet the eligibility for both. You get 12 weeks of leave in a 12-month time period to bond with your baby. This doesn't have to be taken at all, all at one time, and it can be broken up. And again, that eight weeks of partial wage replacement is available through California paid family leave. Does non-birth parent mean you guys have to be married or how do they define the non-birth parent? Do you know? Yes. So in the state of California, uh, it would be a, um, a same-sex partner. 
uh, if you have a registered domestic partner, although those are kind of becoming more few and far between since same sex is legal. Um, so that's why we always refer to it as the non-birth partner. Um, this would also apply if you maybe adopt a child. Um, you have a child in which a judge designates is now your responsibility. Um, so, you know, it could be adoptions. It could be, pardon me, um, you know, situations in which you are becoming the legal ward of a, um, you know, a parent figure. Someone is, you know, you're taking over a child. Um, foster placements. These are all other reasons that you would need to take bonding leave. So it's not just the birth of a child, there are other extenuating circumstances. So really great question. And they just put it, they can just go to EDD as well to file? Yep, yep. Again, I would always say, please um, speak with your, your HR or business partner to let them know that you're going to be taking this leave. Um, they might require a birth certificate or, um, you know, the legal paperwork that states, you know, a judge is placing a child in your care or the adoption paperwork, um, but EDD makes it really simple to file for um, paid family leave. Great questions. So here are my suggested steps for taking leave. Um, first, speak with your doctor and get your estimated due date. That's, you know, always something important to know. Um, review your company handbook. Uh, speak with your manager and your HR business partner. When leave begins, file your EDD claim online. When the baby arrives, here's something that sometimes people forget to do. Add your baby onto your health insurance plan. Um, you usually have 30 days from the birth of your child or an adoption or a placement to add them onto your health insurance plan. You want to make sure that you do that as soon as possible so that way you don't start getting those pesky health insurance bills. It's something in the health insurance world called a qualifying life event. And that's also a time when you can review your benefits outside of annual open enrollment. So maybe you now have a baby and you want to elect into an FSA. You can do this then. Um, if the circumstances surrounding your leave change, make sure to inform your HR business partner um, and enjoy your time off. I see a question up here. Let's see. So yes, you can take four weeks off prior to your due date. Um, what impact it has. Um, so say your say your your baby is due on July first, right? And you go out um, June first. That starts your FEMLA clock ticking sooner rather than later. So um, let me see if I can draw this out only because I am a visual person and sometimes on the computer is not so great. So 6-1-2022, this would be when your FEMLA starts. 7-1-2022 is your due date. So then um, say you deliver 7-5, then you have PDL, um, and then say you're disabled for six weeks after. I'm just going rough. Let's go 8, 20, 20, 22. Um, so you can see, hopefully you can see it. I don't know, maybe not. But basically what that means is your FEMLA is going to expire um, before you are... Um, before your PDL does. So you're going to run through all of your FEMLA. Um, I would definitely check your employee handbook because in some cases, your California, um, your CIFRA may start earlier, which means that you might not get as much bonding time on the back end. Um, for instance, I will, I will do it this way. My first child, I went out at 36 weeks. I sat around, I was really bored. Um, baby came at 38 weeks and five days. Um, and it just kind of, <coughs> pardon me, moved my timeline a little bit forward. Um, so I didn't take as much time on the back end. Um, I would definitely, definitely advise you to check with your HR person to see how that runs, um, because you might not want to short yourself time. Whereas for instance, my baby, this time I went out at 
39 weeks. Um, baby came and went out 39 weeks and two days. Baby came at 39 weeks, five days. I am off for a full six months with my company's um, leave policies. Yeah. So, yeah. I think it's also how you feel too. It That's is. Funny. It, it you is. Were also saying you feel. were so bored. Like yeah. I didn't take enough time. I didn't take, um, I only took two weeks instead of four weeks. I think my company offered and I was so uncomfortable at the end. It was hot. I couldn't even sit. It all, yeah. It all depends. It just on, depends on how you feel like it all you depends feel on how you, you need feel. to this take, time you want, you yeah, know, and you're not feeling well. And you just exactly. want to really, like take that time because once that baby comes, like you don't get any quiet, relaxing time ever. Yeah, totally. So this was, time with, with the toddler in preschool and working from yeah, home, yeah. working remotely, I said to my OB, I literally roll myself out of bed and my desk is right there. <laughs> I'm not commuting into San Francisco. I don't need to take four weeks off beforehand. Yeah. Uh, so again, I would, I would advise you that, that you check with your HR person on how that might affect you not taking the full amount of your leave. Um, another great question that came in is how is patient, how is the partial wage replacement calculated? So there is a look back period in the state of California. It looks back at, um, four quarters. I want to say, um, starting about a year and a half, um, before you file. So it looks at your, it looks at four quarters. And then what it does is it takes the highest amount that you've earned. So say, you know, one quarter you earn 25,000, one quarter you earn 25,000, one quarter you earn, you earn 35,000, maybe you got a bonus. And then the other quarter is 25,000. They're going to use $35,000 as that highest amount that you earned in that quarter. And they're going to base your wage replacement on that. So that's a really, really great question. Um, I can also link to that. There's a calculator online where if you're salaried, you can go ahead and plug it in it'll automatically calculate it for you. Um, if you're hourly and your paychecks may fluctuate depending on how many hours you work, you can go ahead and put that in too, and it'll calculate how much is going to be uh, owed to you. So really fantastic question. So um, my final thoughts, if you are covered by a collective bargaining unit, please read your CBA thoroughly. Um, if your company offers leave beyond FEMLA or SEFRA, check your handbook carefully for information relating to COBRA. What is COBRA? COBRA is a continuation of your health insurance. I mentioned FEMLA and SIFRA states that you have to maintain your participation in your company's health insurance plans. Well, for instance, my company, um, I have an additional eight weeks off. My health insurance would end because I am no longer covered by FEMLA or SIFRA. I would have the ability to enroll in COBRA. And then when I come back to work, I go ahead and I um, go back onto the health insurance plan and I no longer have to pay for COBRA. So just something to check into. And again, the birth adoption of a child is a qualifying life event for your health insurance plan. So you'll want to contact your benefits team for further details on this. As someone who works in the retirement uh, realm, I always say this is always a really great time. Double check your beneficiaries for your retirement plans, your life insurance. Um, you know, we don't like to think about this stuff, but as we have children, as our families expand, we always want to make sure that our beneficiaries are current um, on paperwork somewhere. So that way, if something happens, it's all laid out there. I have had um, retirement benefits go to the state before where somebody has not um, put down a beneficiary. So there was no next of kin, nothing like that. And this person's benefits all went to the state. So please don't let that happen. Please make sure that your beneficiaries are up to date. Yeah. We also have to your point about not wanting to uh, like think about things, but we also have wills trust in the state for sprinkles parents. Um, if that's of interest of anyone can send the link to in the follow-up. Um, so you can see all the documents you can fill out for wills trust in the state as well as these are all the times when you have a baby that you start kind of putting legal documents, your benefits, all these things kind of fall into place and you start thinking about financials and 529s. Um, so it's a lot at once. So we're here to kind of, as Bringles Parents, help you guys navigate through that um, to make parenting as easy as possible. Because as moms of toddlers, we can tell you it doesn't, it's great. It doesn't slow down. It doesn't slow down. It doesn't get easier because you just think I got to get past pregnancy, got to pass like feed, like labor. Um, so we want to make it as easy as possible for you guys. 
Um, any so, other questions? Yeah. Now that I've, now that I've blabbed it to you about this and I've probably made it still a little bit more confusing. Um, let me know if you have any questions. If not, feel free to shoot me an email. Um, I will probably get back to you in the evenings when the babies are down, but I am always happy to help you, you know, walk through stuff, um, take a look at your handbook, anything like that. I, this is uh, one aspect of my job that I love doing just because I find it so fascinating and it's so personal. Um, and yes, let's see a few questions. Let's see, hold on. Uh, a maximum limit for wage replacement um, in terms of the amount that you get paid or the duration? Yes, I believe it is 1,257 per week. So when FEMLA runs out and you exhaust all the bonding leave, um, can people talk to their company about taking any more paid time off and getting COBRA? Yes, definitely. Um, that's why there might be a provision in your handbook that states, you know, you may be eligible for more um, time off, maybe a personal leave of absence or something like that. I would definitely encourage you read your handbook and check and see how that is. Um, another resource too um, is maybe you have a friend or a coworker who's gone out before. You can always pick their brain. Oh, um, the wage replacement uh, duration. So. For pregnancy disability leave, it could be up to 17 and I believe um, 17 and some percentage weeks of time off uh, paid pregnancy disability leave that you could get. So again, it depends on what your doctor says. Um, you know, if maybe your doctor needs to have you on bed rest for the last two months of your pregnancy, you would be eligible to receive, you know, however many weeks um, that is there. Um, and then for baby bonding, it is eight weeks of wage replacement through the state. So it all kind of depends on your situation. And one thing I know this isn't necessarily about paid leave, but I think just in the uh, spirit of it is like going back to work, like it's hard to just jump right back in. Like if it's like, yes, week 10, whatever, week 22 of paid leave or whatever, I'm going back to work full time, this, that, like keep in mind, you just had a baby. It's a very big transition. Like just, you know, the weeks are up, the pay is up. Doesn't mean it's like what's best for you or, you know what I mean? So make sure you know yourself, your body. Like I'll tell the story really quick. Um, when I went back from maternity leave with my daughter, it was like peak COVID. She wasn't taking a bottle. I tried to jump back in and like, could not function right without sleep, without having to feed her on demand. Like it was not great. And, but the money had run out. Like so I think just, again, know yourself, know what, you know, leave is best for you too, is just something to keep in mind. And that's why I always say, you know, if the situation, if the circumstances of your leave change, let your, empl your, let your employer know, um, but also don't shortchange yourself. Um, you know, say your company offers you six months of paid time off and, you know, you decide in month five that you're not going to return. Um, you know, I don't know that I would necessarily shortchange myself, you know, an entire month of leave. Um, so speaking as somebody who, um, speaking as a friend and not necessarily, um, you know, an HR professional, like don't shoot yourself in the foot there. Um, you know, you want to make sure that you're kind to yourself and, you know, your employer most likely has someone who has been subbing in for you. So, you know, now is a time to be selfish. So that's all I will say about that. Again, I am not a lawyer, so um, I can't give out legal advice, um, but just, you know, take care of yourself and your baby. So um, I had a question. Sure. Um, well, thank you both for doing this. This is a really great refresher. So the first time I had my, my, my first baby in 2020, um, I had my disability extended. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I had it extended so much so that then when I took like the next part, which is FMLA right? or baby bonding, yep. um, I actually had exhausted all of my uh, um, job protected leave, yep. but then I had like two weeks left of um, state benefits. Uh huh. And then I was too scared to like ask my employer to, I knew they needed me and I was like, okay, I, I can go back. I'm just going to forego those like two weeks. Um, uh -huh. 
do you have, because it, it, what's always been confusing for me is um, like a job protected leave and then mm-hmm. paid leave, those two lines. So like you had that yeah. slide a yep. couple wrote a couple slides back. Um, do you have a slide? I, I guess we can like look back at that if, if we can, or do you have a slide of like separating the pay versus the protection and how extended it can go? Because here it looks like FMLA and CFRA are are not paid, right? Those are the job protection and then PDL and something else is the pay. So PDL, PDL is paid. And you bring up a really good point is that if you run through your job protected leave, mm-hmm. um, your employer may say either you come back to work or, um, you know, maybe you will be placed on, um, oh my God, it just flew out of my brain, ADA. Um, you might be placed on ADA leave where you need an accommodation. Um, And that is a leave that may not be protecting your job. So sometimes that does happen where you will, you know, stuff happens in birth. Um, You know, you need more time to heal. Um, Sometimes I've had cases where women have postpartum and that they just can't come back to work um, and they're still out on pregnancy disability leave. And you know, they exhaust their FEMLA, their CIFRA, um, you know, a good employer will try to work with you on that. Um, but yes, there are some situations in which your pregnancy disability leave will keep going long after you have exhausted your, your FEMLA and your baby bonding leave. So yes, that does happen. Um, what is, and I'm trying to remember, I don't exactly remember how much time that was. What is that a breakdown of that. Is that what we're looking at here? Cause I'm not yep. sure. If it would be at. 17 pregnancy disability leave gives you a total of, um, I think it's 480 hours of paid leave. I don't know what that is. It's, um, let me see if I can work that out in days really quickly. And it's a weird fraction. It's, um, let's see 17 times eight. Uh, well, no 17 weeks is 17 times five. It's, it's 680 hours of paid leave, 680 hours of paid leave. Um, I don't know how many weeks that is, but um, it's like 17 and, and three sevenths or something like that. It's, it's a really funky thing. Um, And then after that, you take, remind me which, which one it is that you take baby bonding. Sifra. Sifra. After that, you take Sifra and, and you're allowed the, you're allowed 12 weeks. And eight of those, eight of those is wage replacement through uh, the state of California. This may, okay. This sounds like the timeline I had actually, this uh-huh. is 29 weeks or so. Uh-huh. Okay. Okay. So that's okay. Get, I got it. Um, but then the, so those are the paid mm-hmm. types and then the, the protected types. What are those? FEMLA and Zifra. FEMLA and CIFRA. And so it looks like, and how long is FEMLA? If you can remind me. 12 weeks. FEMLA and CIFRA are both 12 weeks, but at some points they may run concurrently. They were. So. Okay. So then that's only really 24 weeks of job protection. Yep. (gasps) Okay. Yes. I could have sworn I had a little more and I don't remember how though. It was probably, it could have been pregnancy disability leave um, and your, your employer let you stay off or it could have been um, an ADA accommodation or maybe your employer has um, a longer leave allotment than others. So. Yeah, we had, the, we had the four months and then I had taken a two additional. So they, they top up for the four months and then I had the two additional. Nice, nice. Uh, two additional months like that, that they didn't top up, but I was able to do state benefits. Um, okay. I think this makes sense. I just don't remember everything. <laughs> um, no problem. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, we have a few questions in the chat. Okay. Um, so Wednesday through Thursday instead of Wednesday through Wednesday. When they say weeks, my employer had counted that as not inclusive of the last date. So Wednesday through Tuesday, expecting me to return on Wednesday. Yeah, so it would run like Monday to Sunday. So um, say your leave ends on, um, so for instance, my leave ends on July 10th. Uh, July 11th is my next, my uh, first day back at work. 
And also as a little tip going back to work, sometimes it's easier to go back to work on like a Friday or a Thursday, just so you're not putting in a full week. Um, your first week back is just another little tip as it, it's a lot to, you'll see like not to scare you, but I try to go back full week Monday, go back into it. And so with my second, I tried to go back on, on a Thursday and Friday and it was a lot easier to adjust. Um, Laura, did you see there's a question about mm -hmm. the shares? Okay. Yep. Um, your summary plan description will most likely speak to that, um, but I'm happy to take a look at it for you. Um, most likely in some instances, for us, for example, um, maternity um, leave to stay home bond with a baby, that, um, that counts as an eligible leave for vesting to continue. So it depends. <laughs> and if anyone feels like their employer, you know, doesn't support parents or, you know, doesn't provide as great benefits or aren't covering your benefits, like feel free to connect with me at Sprinkled Parents and I can come in and help your company with their, you know, figuring out their benefits or best policies or ways to support parents and programming. Um, so that way you can be supported through your work in your new life. Does anyone else have any other questions before we wrap up? All right. Awesome. Well, thanks to everyone for taking the time to be here. Thank you, Laura, for sharing your no expertise and um, tips and tricks with everyone. We'll be sending out the slides, the videos, the follow-ups, the links, so that you guys have it all in one place to make it really easy for all of the baby brains that some of us may feel well pregnant, at least I did. Um, so thank you guys for joining us. Have a thank you. Thanks, you guys. Take Bye. care. Bye.